So thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm James Faulkner, as Kuhn said, I'm the community manager. Uh, I know several of you and several of you I don't know, so I'm more than interested in meeting you uh, either after this talk or maybe later tonight. I encourage you all to come. I'm gonna go kind of fast because we've got a lot of content to work through. I only have four slides and this is the first one. So what I'm going to talk about are life rate hacks. And hopefully if you read the abstract, you'll kind of know what I'm going to be doing here. These are not production ready products that we can sell or that you can use off the shelf. You might be able to. It's more about showing you some of the techniques that you can use to talk to LifeRay in a more lower level uh, DevOps friendly kind of way. Um, you're not gonna, we're not going to be building full on portlets with awesome front ends. We're going to be calling APIs. We're going to be injecting objects. We're going to be uh, visualizing things with D3, uh, uh, .js, doing a whole bunch of stuff that's not building a portlet. So we're thinking way beyond portlets here. So um, here's the 10 hacks we're going to do. Um, we're going to start off really easy with some web content templating hacks. I've done this a couple, for a couple years now. I use all of these heavily in various places, including liferay.com and in the mobile app that you hopefully have downloaded and are using today. Um, so we'll start off with some web content hacks on 6.2. Uh, we'll then uh, move on to Liferay 7 in the second half and show you some of the interesting things you can do with Liferay 7 and get, give you a taste of the power of Liferay and set you on a path to awesomeness. Um, like I said, these aren't ready to to go off the shelf things, these are gonna give you uh, ideas in your head about what you can do be, uh, w above and beyond what you already know. So all of the code you're gonna see is available already. It's on GitHub, you can see the URL there at the top. Um, and I've, I put a readme on the top that kind of describes each of these hacks. Um, and so, um, so, without further ado, I'm gonna show you the code. So let's see what it looks like. You guys ready? Okay, um, so first question, how many of you have done, uh, written a web content template in LifeRay? Okay, good, a lot of you. So you'll, you, you should hopefully like this. Um, so we're gonna look at, uh, we're gonna start off, as I said, very simply, uh, so we can see where we're gonna go here. Um, if I can find it, you can read that, can't you? Sure you can. Okay, so I can make this even bigger. Okay, so it's the simplest web content template that's not just showing you HTML. Um, can you guys read that in the back? Yeah. Okay, so we get a handle to LifeRay service and we show you how many users are on LifeRay. So let's see what that looks like. I've already got it uh, running here. Localhost 8080 is running LifeRay 6.2. And I'll sign in real quick. By the way, I have 10 hacks, so I have four and a half minutes for each. So here goes hack one. So there it is, right? Pretty easy. Pretty fast, there's 152 users on my sample system. If I reload it, pretty fast. Okay, so that's easy. So let's switch back to our, oop, not that one. Okay, so let's go to hack two or hack 1B. So the same exact hack, but in this case, you've got a lot of code in there making trouble. So let's see what that looks like when I execute this. I'm gonna edit the template, scroll down, shift command replace, and I hit save and we wait. That took forever, relatively speaking, over a second. If I hit reload, it's still taking, you know, it's still taking kind of a long time. And that is simply because it, oh man, that's kind of annoying. It's basically doing a loop from one to whatever, 150 million or 1.5, 15 million uh, forever, and that's no good. So if you have a long running process and you invoke it from your web content template, it's gonna take forever. So what's the fix for this? So the fix is in, 1C, we're gonna use Ajax. So this is a, a, a simple temp, uh, way to use Ajax in a LifeRay web content template. And basically, we're taking advantage of the fact that web content templates run in the context of a portlet, in a portal. So there are render phases, there are action phases, there are resource phases, there are um, 
event phases, and so you know this from your script. So I can say, if I'm in the render phase, give me the HTML and some JavaScript, which calls back to the exact same portlet, which in this case is a web content template, using a resource URL, which you can see here. And it says, if I'm in the resource phase, give me the same code I had before. I'm going to count to 15, 150 million, and then I'm going to give you back the code. So the, the net effect here is that it renders much quicker because you're no longer sitting there waiting for the, the HTML to or the, the template to render. And you're sitting here waiting for life rate to render, apparently. OK, let's try that again. Oh, I need to sign in. Well, OK. So apparently my session timed out. So I sign in, edit template. And I can already tell I'm getting behind in time. Copy, paste, save. And so it renders pretty fast. See, it's still waiting at the bottom for the, uh, for the data to come back. So if I sit here and wait long enough, it will eventually show you the, uh, the, the number of seconds that it took. And it's still cranking away there because my CPU is going crazy here. OK, so there, it took 12 seconds to count up. I think I actually had another extra uh, count in there for like 1.5 billion. So it took forever, but the page rendered. OK, so that's fun. Um, so that's a very handy way to do rich content apps from LifeRay templates. So one more. So we go to hack 1D. So here is a non-trivial template. And I'm not going to go through the code. I'm just going to copy and paste it in. And I'm going to tell you what it does, because it's really cool. How many of you used LifeRay Expando services? Expando and LifeRay. OK, a lot of you. So Expando is like this. It's like a MongoDB for LifeRay. It's like you can create new uh, content in the, in the database without having to, to change the schema in the database itself. But it's really hard to get at that data because it's like stored in like four different tables. So this is a browser for, uh, for Expando. So I can, say, I can say which class I want to say. I'll say user, Expando table. I'll use custom fields. And then it shows me the content of my fake Expando database. All of the, all the columns are there. Not not only are they there, I can actually change them. So if I want to change this guy to like strawberry, so it changes, uh, actually, I'll change mine because I'm already logged in. I'll change this to, uh, I don't know, lemon. Lemon. <laughs> and if I go to my account, I can actually see that it did indeed change that. Um, if I can find my account here under custom fields, which is what LifeRay actually uses Expando for, uh, if for its own custom fields. If that loads, it's our minute. All right, it's taking too long. All right, so believe me that it's, it's okay, here we go. <laughs> now I have to do it. Yeah. Okay, uh, custom fields. I scroll up and you can see my fruit is now lemon. So, and this is basically all implemented in, um, in a, in a template using Ajax, not only for reading, but for writing. So you can create apps in LifeRay using web content templates very easily. OK, so let's move on to hack number two. Again, all this code is here, so I'm not going to uh, bore you with that. Um, where did hack two go? Here it is. OK, so hack two is dynamic. How many of you have done dynamic query in LifeRay or know what it is? OK, not too many. So dynamic query is the ability to query the database using uh, arbitrary queries. You can construct a query in Java and then issue it to the database, including like uh, uh, you can do, uh, what are they called? Um, not visions. Um, yes, that. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> OK, so. Uh, let's see. I practiced this, and now I'm like, all my keystrokes are getting crazy. OK, so we'll start with Velocity. Um, actually, quick show of hands. How many of you prefer Velocity over FreeMarker? And how many of you FreeMarker over Velocity? OK, right answer. <laughs> I think FreeMarker is really good, but um, Velocity is much, is much uh, more compact. So here's the first example of a web content template written in Velocity that's actually doing a 
dynamic template or dynamic query. So you can see here we're loading the dynamic query factory util and getting a, an object to, this is essentially porting a dynamic query in Java to Java or to a velocity. Um, this example actually goes to the Liferay message boards uh, service, retrieves a list of threads that have been written in the last seven or ten days and sorts them by the number of posts in that thread to kind of show you what the latest and greatest awesome threads are on the um, on the site. So here you can see it's basically getting these. Um, this, these links are basically links to the to the forum on my fake site, which has fake content. Um, so in, in actually, if you go to the LifeRate community homepage, this script is actually in action, showing you the hot topics that are occurring on our forums. So it's very easy again to write um, to write dynamic queries in uh, in Velocity as well as free markers. So I'll show you that real quick. So here it is uh, again in, in Velocity. If I switch over to the free marker version of that, uh, Shift Command N. What is it? Why is that not? Oh, here we go. Hack. Okay, hack two dot FTL. So here's the free marker version of that. It's again, it's using the uh, the re the render phase trick that I showed you in the last hack uh, to render some HTML a table, and then it fills in that table by calling back to itself. And this is the code that runs on the server that generates the, the actual list of threads and the count. And this is the same exact uh, code in FreeMarker. FreeMarker is a little bit more restrictive. It, it, it tries to keep you from doing dangerous things, like class.forename. So there's some tooling in LifeRate to help with uh, invoking or instantiating class, or sorry, instantiating jo uh, LifeRate objects without needing class.forename. So like static util will give you a list of all the static methods in a particular class, like MB thread local service util. Um, and then you can call static methods on that. Uh, we also have an object util which will allow you to, which will allow you to instantiate objects like a Gregorian calendar to to create a, a date a date thing that says give me the last week's threads. So we basically do two dynamic queries: one for the th MB thread service, and then one for the actual message board service itself to get the uh, to get the um, the subject. So one thing to know: the same rules when you're writing Java dynamic queries apply here. Like, don't hit the database more times than is necessary, and use the database features uh, as much as possible possible, like projections and ordering and limiting and so forth, so uh, so that you're not sitting there waiting for your 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 uh, page to compile. So just as an example, on liferay.com we have 350,000 um, message boards posts and like, I don't know how many, 25,000 threads, 150,000 users, and this query takes less than a second to do on Liferay's database. So um, it's not, the performance of free marker and velocity is very close to what it is in Java. There is certainly overhead because of the parsing, uh, but that's pretty much it and it's very minimal, especially when you have a small script like this. Okay, next hack. So that was uh, that was hack three here. So you'll notice when I was showing you in hack two, um, copying and pasting around uh, into the LifeRay template editor, and that's that's pretty. I don't really like doing that. So this hack is less of a hack; it's more of a demonstration. Um, there's a company called Monitor in in uh, Sweden. They're one of our partners, and they created a very very cool script, which I actually I have to show you because it's really super cool. It's a DDM tool, and it allows you to uh, create a file system on your disk that represents all of the things in LifeRay, like templates and structures and uh, application display templates um, and things like that. So for example, if I run DDM, so let me make this even larger because so you can see in the back here. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this. So I'll just create a temporary, I'll just DD, uh, make their hacks. DDM. So it's kind of interactive. So it's the first time I've run it. So I'll create a new project. Hacks. Uh, temp hacks. Default locale. Include the defaults. My test. Life rate host. HTTP local host. 8080. 80, 80. Uh, test. Test. Same email. So it tries to connect. It says yes. Oh, I don't want to add another server. Uh, I don't want this. Okay, save. Let's see what happens here. No. Okay, now I'm going to do hacks. I'm going to do my test. Uh, 
and it goes and downloads all of the things. So let me show you what it just did. So if I look on the file system, um, I don't know if I can make this one bigger. I could do it like that. Uh, if I look in hacks, it just created nothing. Hmm, let me try that again. I think when I created that second um, hack, or when I created that second uh, thing, let's see, download all, maybe that's what I need to do. Okay, that's better. So now it's created this, a set of directories with application display templates, document media, dynamic data lists, with my structures, um, and my journal templates and structures. So for example, here's my, my hacked templates from earlier. So the other cool part is if you, in, the, in this tool, if you tell it to watch, now it's going to start watching that directory. And anytime you make a change, like if I go back to my directory here and I go to back to hack one, which is now my expando uh, database, if I edit this, so open with, let's say my text editor, uh, grab any text editor, here's text wrangler. If I make a change here, and I'll just put in something here like H1, hi there, H1, save. And you can see once it noticed that I, I made the file change, and then if I reload here, then I get the change. So it's a very cool tool for managing dynamic data lists, managing application display templates, managing journal templates and structures, um, pretty much any of the, te of the templating technologies within LifeRay, it will grab. So you can see here what it's grabbing, um, structures and templates and everything, and then it shows up in the actual uh, directory here, which you saw. So all of these things can be edited. Um, tags, navigation, templates, these are ADTs. Um, pretty much anything in LifeRay that's templated you can do. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? It's like you can create, and you can create, you can run an IDE project off of that directory, check that into Git, uh, into Git and then have this really nicely maintainable uh, set of scripts. Um, but it's not fast enough for me. So I really want to see real-time rendering. So let's, let's take a look at hack number four here. Um, so when you write, normally when you write a template, you have to go to the editor and you have to type in some code, hit save, go to the page where it has been put on, and then you get this big giant error in FreeMarker, or you get a blank silence from, from velocity, and that's super annoying. Then you have to go back and you have to change it, and it's like you have to have all these windows open. So wouldn't it be cool if you could just do like render it in real time? So this is hack number four. I'll show you the code for this once I do the demo here. I don't even think I need to sign in for this one. Um, let me zoom back out, make this a bit bigger. Okay, so here's the template code and it's gonna render it down below under result. So, hi there. Yes, how cool is that? Next hack, I'm just kidding. So that's, that's pretty boring. Um, so let's say one plus two. Three, yay, it works. Okay, let's say uh, assign user local service equals, I can't even remember what it is. Um, oh, unexpected file and, and a file reach. So, right, it's, it sees these errors immediately. Um, let's say service locator dot find service com dot life ray dot portal dot service dot user local service. Okay, Ten error disappears, I still see nothing. Dollar user, oh, how cool is that? Autocomplete. And there's my user local service. And I can say like dot get users, negative minus one, minus one. Oh, got an error. See the little error stripe here. Uh, it failed because this actually returns a sequence and uh, velocity, it might actually print that out. FreeMarker is much more strict about it. So let's say list user local service dot that as user hash list and h1 user 
dot. Oh, no dollar. It's still in velocity mode. Get full name. And I needed this. Okay, as you'll notice as I'm typing and making errors, it's showing me what the errors are in real time. So it's a super handy way to, and then I'll get the list of users, a super, super handy way of writing web content templates uh, without having to worry about saving, going to the page, seeing an error, going to the page. So let's see an even more um, complex ex example of this. So if I go to back to my hacks page, uh, project hack four. So this is a pretty short page which generates a grid of the users on the on the portal itself their job and their job titles and a link to their profile pages so you can see it's super easy to change this as well if I wanted to go uh, say from row size six to maybe three it immediately renders it and you see a nice representation of the article itself. Uh, you can also change, if you have existing articles, um, say the welcome article from Life Race 6.2, uh, you can do that and it will show you a list of the variables that are available. So if I do content.data, it then renders the welcome screen down here. Uh, so it kind of gives you a, a, a hint of which, um, which structure elements are in the structure that you choose uh, and, uh, and so that you can easily reference them in the code itself. So here's another one which has multiple, doc, uh, multiple structures. So super, super easy to do in fact. And so this is uh, written in Java. So this is called FM console. And if I switch to this mode here, so you can see, let's see where's the portlet. So is, there's actually a JSP that renders it. The portlet itself uses uh, a LifeRay APIs to render that article. Uh, so you can see basically under the um, resource, the serve resource method, which is giving back the, the rendered code of the article. Um, it's grabbing the template, the article ID, and then it's creating a template object, uh, or, or sorry, a free marker template uh, resource using a string reader, and then it's basically populating the token. So these are the tokens that like, getter util and locale and user and theme display, all these objects that you can access from your script are stuck in there in the exact same way as if you're using the real deal. Um, and then it processes that and then re returns the result as a JSON object and then the, the JavaScript just renders it, with, uh, just sticks it in a div uh, on the page. So this hack is uh, basically reaching into LifeRay, finding the APIs that are used to render templates, journal templates, and invoking it every time you make a change. Every time I press the key and wait two seconds, it will re-render the, the article. So that's how that one works. Okay, so next, hack number five. Um, so those are, so hacks one through four were basically web content template hacks. Uh, the fifth one, we're gonna talk about security. Um, this particular hack is being used in uh, production in the LifeRay Events app. And it's basically allowing you to, to create secure JSON web services without using LifeRay's built-in security. So we are rolling our own. That is oftentimes a red flag, um, but I found it much easier to do um, and to do so securely because there's lots of research on the web that tells you how to do it right and how to do it wrong. Um, and some of the pitfalls that people have run into in the past. So normally JSON web services are authenticated and protected by uh, CSRF attacks through LifeRay's built-in mechanisms. But that relies on the fact that you have a user, um, an account on LifeRay.com. And we, at least when you're building apps outside of LifeRay, like on a dedicated mobile device or a kiosk in the airport or somewhere else that's not running LifeRay, maybe not running Java, maybe you don't want to have to log in um, and create an account. You want to basically sort of anonymously access from a secured location. So in this case, mobile apps that are running, native mobile apps that are running, uh, kiosks that are difficult to break into or that would attract a lot of attention if you cracked open the back of it and plugged in something into, uh, into the USB port to try and hack it. Places where you can securely distribute a shared secret and then the, we can use that to communicate uh, through symmetric encryption. So this hack shows you how to create a LifeRay web 
web service using Service Builder and then secure it using the methods of, 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 uh, of symmetric encryption without having to use the, having to have a Liferay account and dealing with all the user management from a non-Liferay system. So here we go. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, the code, and then I'll show you the demo first. I'll show you the code first. So let's switch back and get out of this mode here, and I'll switch over to, oh, sorry, that was actually the right one. So I have, in the same exact um, project, I have, a, uh, I have a service builder service, which I'm going to use for demo. And if I can stop this thing from switching around. OK, so we'll go to service. XML. So here's my basic service. Um, this should look familiar to you, for those of you that uh, know Service Builder. Um, I have a note service, which is doesn't have any local services. It simply has one remote service. And that remote service is, oops, let's go back to my FM console. So let me show you the note service. Note service, impl. So here's the note service. It basically allows you to give me your name and a note, and then it returns uh, the name and the note that you put in. So very simple. So localhost 8080, I'll show you how this looks uh, when you actually invoke it. So FM console, here's my echo service. I can echo it. I can say name, uh, James, hello, London. Ignore this for the moment. OK, so I got a security exception. So this is because I'm not logged in. So if I log in, test, test, and I go back here, reload, James London, and now I, I get the echo. So basically, I had to log in first, which in some cases is, is onerous on the uh, environment that you may be uh, coding in. So what's the fix for this? So the fix is to get rid of the, the need to be authenticated. So you can, let's see. So in Library 6.2, we have this access controlled um, annotation. Oops. And... I'm also going to uncomment this code. And this is the code that actually checks the signature. So it basically, uh, it basically takes all the arguments, puts them into a bucket, and then computes a signature on that based on a shared secret. So one of the requirements for this hack is you have to be able to securely distribute a, a shared key to the devices that you have that are going to be talking back to Liferay so that uh, they can agree on an on a encryption key and then they can figure out. Um, and you can also use asymmetric encryption like um, certificates and other things like that. But I found this to be the simplest uh, way to do it and still maintain security. Uh, so it basically creates a string with a, and then it computes a, a message authentication code or a, a Mac using a, a, a key. So that code is down here. So this is where the, the, the stuff gets checked. So we basically generate a what we expect the signature to be, and then we check it against the signature that you gave me. So essentially, the clients compute the, the signature. They make the API call, including the signature. And then Liferay can check to see whether it is proper or not. Um, so if you're going to do this, make sure you use HMAC in the SHA-256. It's the strongest. Um, uh, encryption that's available without having to sign export agreements with U.S. or other governments of the world. Um, and, and that's basically it. It's very simple. It just creates a, a, a secret key. It computes the signature using uh, uh, the JDK's built-in uh, encryption uh, libraries and then compares it to the signature. So let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and redeploy this. And this is where the demo gods usually strike. So we'll see if we can, what happens here. So I'm going to take, basically take this. I'm going to recompile and rebuild using Maven. Now that I've commented, uncommented all the code out. And it's compiling. We'll go to the, uh, the console here so you can see. And hopefully it does look, ignore that. Okay, so it goes and, and uh, redeploys it, and now we're going to see what it looks like. So, oh, is it not done yet? Okay, so now it's done. Okay, so let me reload this, and we'll go and try it again. Yeah, oh, my reload. Okay, there it is. Now, if I try the same thing, 
and I say name test blank, I'm going to get this portal exception, which is the invalid secure, uh, sys, uh, invalid uh, signature. So I need to provide a signature. So what's the signature? So it's essentially this. It's in the code here. So the, did I leave, not leave it in here? Yeah, here it is. So I want to compute the signature. So depending on the platform that you're on, you can compute it like this. So we'll say something very easy. Name equals James. Note equals hello. London, and then you give it the secret key, which in this case is stored in a portlet property. So if I go to some console, projects, portlet properties, I've got it here. Something hard to guess. That's pretty good. Okay, so there's my key, my expected key. So I take that value and stick it in here. It should give me a portal exception again because I have invalid signature. Oh, I forgot. <coughs> James and hello London. So that would help if I change this. Uh, Ah, thank you. <laughs> that does change things. Uh, let's make this simpler. Note equals hello. Okay, so that one works. So it gives me back, it actually works. So, um, <laughs> demo gods, right? Uh, so that is a very simple way. It's like, it's like very small number of lines to, uh, to create a secured web service without using LifeRay security. So you can kind of get out of that sandbox. Okay, so next hack. Um, so we're gonna shift over to LifeRay 7 now. Um, and LifeRay 7, as you guys know, introduces a whole lot of new stuff around modularity, OSGI, bundles, services. I think, Millen, you're going to talk about a lot of that. No? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, at uh, DevOps, right? At uh, DevOps. Yeah. So, if, if, yeah, so I'm just plugging DevOps right now. <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm doing that. <laughs> okay. So, let's move on to, I want to make sure I cover everything. Okay. So, um, LifeRay has a built-in OSGI container, and you access that container, at least one way to access it interactively is through Telnet. I'll make this bigger again. Okay, so this is the GoGo -Go shell. Um, it's a crazy syntax that I really don't like, which is why the next hack is going to completely ignore it. Um, but you can do things like list all the bundles in LifeRay. So here's all the bundles in LifeRay. There's a lot of them. You can get, you can get uh, information about a specific bundle. Um, you can get information about services. And these commands like services and bundles, if you just type help, you can see them all here. Um, but I know this all looks kind of foreign if you haven't looked at LifeRay 7 before. But like Olaf said, LifeRay 7 is put into a, LifeRay 6.2 was put into a blender. Out came all these ice chunks. These are all the ice chunks. And you can talk to these things. You can inject services into them. You can call their APIs. You can start and stop them. You can manage their life cycle. Um, it's a, it's, it's basically like, taking the kimono off of LifeRay entirely. Um, and you get, to, you get to see everything. So it's really, really powerful and really cool. So I'm gonna show you some of the hacks uh, around this. So the first one I'm gonna show you is WebSockets. How many of you have heard of WebSockets? 
WebSockets, okay, a couple of you. Um, so for those who haven't heard of it, WebSockets is a way to open a bi-directional bi channel to a browser. Um, and uh, I'm gonna show you a demo and then we're gonna sh look at the code on LifeRay 7. So here we go. So you can basically talk to, from LifeRay, you can push information to a browser instead of trying to pull things. So this is running LifeRay 7. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And you can see, well you can't see because it's kind of giant. Um, so I've got, a, I've got a system with a bunch of fake users on it that I've generated with fake content, like fake blog posts and fake message boards and fake all kinds of stuff. And it kind of makes it look like a more lively site. Um, so if I click on forums here, after a giant JSP compilation, most likely, um, it'll eventually show you the forums here. Uh, here's my category. Well, I actually only have one test. I only have one um, post because I I know why. Um, but I have a ton of, of, uh, of blog posts here. Okay, so click on WebSockets. So this is a Google map. And what you didn't see happen in the background was a WebSocket uh, connection was established with LifeRay. So right now the WebSocket is running on LifeRay. Or sorry, there's a there's a, an, a service on LifeRay that is listening for blog posts to be created. And when a blog post gets created, it sends a it pushes a message to this map and we're gonna plot it on a heat map. So if I switch to a separate uh, uh, tab here and start my fake blog generator. So if I go to Social Driver, this is an, a tool that I wrote that actually is part of the source code for this, um, for this demo. So if you wanna create those fake users just like I did, it goes out to Wikipedia and grabs content and then inject, it puts it into a blog post and generates some fake uh, pictures of people. Uh, that's also there. So if I st I'm going to click start blog here <laughs> and let's see what happens. So click start blog. Switch back over to here, and you can see every time someone blog, posts a blog post, a little heat signature is plotted on the map, depending on where the person lives. So you can see we've got a ton of bloggers in the South, Southern Caribbean and in the Congo, and uh, several in uh, Europe too. Oh wow, look at that, something. <laughs> so we have a lot of bloggers there. Clearly, we have an untapped market. All the life race salespeople in the room should probably set up the next <laughs> symposium in Puerto Rico, or maybe. Uh, Aruba, perhaps, um, and our Dutch friends can <laughs> join on, join up. Um, okay, so that's it's basically what it's doing. So let me stop that because it will take over my system. Um, so let's look at the code about how what's happening here. So this is a LifeRay 7 code, so it's kind of a little interesting to see some of the differences between uh, what we saw in LifeRay 6.2 and what we're seeing in LifeRay 7. So I'll make this bigger here. I want to keep the uh, other window open so... Oops. Okay, so there's actually three components, ha uh, uh, three components, and they're all super simple. First component, there's no source code at all. It's just a bnd.bnd file. And it's essentially, its whole job is to export the, the necessary WebSockets classes uh, from LifeRay, from the runtime to plugins. Because those, those javax.websocket uh, packages are not by default exported. Um, if any of you have you ever used JBoss, JBoss 7 introduced a, a new class loading mechanism, uh, which is a, has, is a, suffers from a very similar issue, which is not all the packages in Java JDK are available to you as a plugin author. So you'll need to know which packages you need and declare uh, create a, uh, this is called a, a fragment. It's not a full bundle, it's a bundle fragment. But it's essentially, it's just exposing certain classes um, to plugins. So the second one, the second uh, component here is the thing that's listening on the server side. So that is called the WS Bridge Web API um, and it's some Java code. And you can see, uh, it uses WebSocket, so if you're not familiar with the WebSocket API, that's okay. Basically, anytime I start the browser and open that map, there's some JavaScript code that calls back to LifeRay saying, establish a new WebSocket. And this is the code that gets run. The onOpen um, method gets called. And in the onOpen method, uh, the important part here is the, uh, the, the registration of the, the service itself, uh, which is the listener for listening um, uh, for the um, for the 
the, the, the blog post. So the third uh, component here is the actual portlet itself, uh, which renders that map and does other stuff. So the echo portlet here is what is what's actually uh, doing the map stuff. So um, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, I'm looking for the the listener where it sticks the listener in. And now I can't because I'm Yeah, here it is. Um, so when a session gets created, when a WebSocket session gets created, it's basically creating a, a listener dynamically, creating a model listener instance based off of blogs entry. And when a blog post is created, this on after create method gets called, and then the message is sent back to the WebSocket. So, uh, so these three components in together work to create this WebSocket demo using some of the new Liferay 7 uh, APIs for injecting services uh, and for um, creating um, new, uh, for creating portlets themselves. So you can see some of the, the, the tags here that uh, this is basically saying that um, the, uh, when this this describes the life cycle of the, uh, the of the I can't remember what the name is now the, the the component on the server side that is listening for the blog posts and sending them back to the client um, so these are all brand new um, I'm not going to go through them because I don't have a whole lot of time here's another one declaring the, the some of the properties of the portlet itself all this stuff used to belong in XML files and is now part of the uh, set of annotations that come along with OSGI and Life Ray 7. Okay, so next uh, hack is going to be similar. Let's see. Um, so how many of you prefer, or how many of you write JavaScript? Okay, a fair bit of you, okay. Um, this is a dangerous question. How many of you pref like the, the less st strict typing of JavaScript and allow you to create code faster and uh, not have to worry about type checking at compile time? All right, yeah, I know there's some of you. I think that I think that more of you like it than you're you're admitting. Um, I really like it. Um, and a lot of the times, it's best when you can quickly iterate and you can write and test and write and test and write and test, and you're not depending on it being correct the first time. So a lot of the the next several hacks are gonna are gonna be JavaScript centric, JavaScript running on the server side, not client side JavaScript, not Angular, not Ember, not Backbone, not Metal JS, not Senna, not any of that. These are all server side JavaScript uh, code for doing very interesting things. And Java 8 actually ships with a JavaScript interpreter built in called Nashorn. Um, and it's a, not an, actually an interpreter. It actually compiles the code into Java bytecode. So it's very fast. Um, and you can write ECMAScript 5, I believe. And they I don't know what their plans are for 6. But um, definitely ECMAScript 5 uh, is fully supported. And so I'm going to show you how what that looks like. So when I tell, when I tell net it into here, let me do it again. Disconnect. So when I tell that in here, you can see that there's some stuff happening here. And one of the things that is happening is in the background, uh, one of my future, uh, the, one of the last hacks, which we'll be getting to shortly, um, is creating a Nashorn, instantiating Nashorn in GoGo. -Go. So here I can say engine eval, and I give it a, a line of JavaScript, var x equals one. Exciting, right? Yeah, uh, so let's say var y equals two. Pretty exciting. Print x, time, x plus y. Okay, three, right? Thank you, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so that's super, super awesome that you can do this. Uh, you can actually do interactive mode. Oops. Try that again. Oops. X var x equals one. <coughs> R y equals two. Print x times y. Yeah, very exciting, right? So you can interactively type JavaScript, just like if you open the developer console in, uh, in Chrome or Firebug in Firefox. Um, 
So that's cool, but like that, that you saw in that stuff earlier, it's like, it's interactive, but it's like not, not really maintainable for a developer or an operator. So, um, so the next hack is going to show you how to create scripts and maintain them and make them easily available. So go, go shell in Liferay. Um, what do, we out of time? Ten minutes. Okay, 10 minutes, perfect. So the GoGo Shell in LifeRay um, has this ability, just like when you run bash, it looks for dot .profile and dot .bash RC. GoGo has a similar construct called uh, Gosh. I guess it's called Gosh instead of Gosh. Gosh Profile, um, which does exactly the same thing. So I have created as my eighth hack uh, a, set of, a set of commands in GoGo to get you out of the GoGo world, because the GoGo world sucks, and you do not want to be there. It's an awful place. It's like, it's really bad. Whoever wrote that, if I ever meet them in person, like there's going to be fisticuffs, I guarantee it. Um, so it's a horrible syntax. I'm sorry if they, this ever makes it out on a video. I apologize, but um, it's it's not good. So JavaScript way better. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, so so here's where I'm creating, uh, I'm instantiating things uh, to create the Nashorn instance. Um, I'm loading a file called initscript.js into the Nashorn runtime, and then I'm looking for files uh, that you may write and maintain under source control that you want to load in. So that's essentially what I do, is I load this initscript.js, which is here. I'll show you that one. So initscript.js is a JavaScript, and it looks for files under this particular directory, and then for each of those files, it creates a go, -go command that, when invoked, will invoke that JavaScript. So you can create a library of tools. As a DevGops person, if you want to be able to Telnet or SSH into your running Liferay instance at 3 a.m. when you get that call that you did not want because you're on call, you want uh, to have a set of helper scripts available to help you do what you need to do. And so this very simple, it's 27 lines of JavaScript, uh, sets up the commands you need in your interactive shell. So you'll wake up, you'll get the call, you'll log in, get a cup of coffee, um, log into your life ray system, and then you've got all these commands available to you that you or someone else has written. Uh, so here, uh, so let's see, so I mean, you've already seen it in operation. When I logged in again, uh, when I do this, disconnect, Telnet, you can see it says, found these custom commands, and I found three of them. So these three commands are ones that I've written, and they not only show you, this is hack nine, by the way, they not only show you how easy it is to write and maintain scripts that run on Liferay, but how to access Liferay itself and do some very interesting things. Again, some of this is meant to pique your interest and get you thinking about what you could do. Uh, it's not necessarily something that is going to be immediately useful. So for example, here's hack1.js. This is basically creating a model listener um, in, jo in JavaScript and then injecting it into Liferay's uh, runtime. So the listener is one line long, it does print, but the actual way to invoke it is like four lines, or five, four lines, five lines with, yeah, it could be one line. Um, so it's really easy to instantiate this object and to inject it as a listener into Liferay and then it'll give me back the listener account. So, because of this, the gauche profile and init script stuff, this script is available to me as just a simple command, hack js1, hack js1. And it registered new listener, and you can see the messaging here, listener count is four. I've already run this a couple times, so there's three other listeners sitting there. Um, and I can actually look at, I can see the, the services, grep listener, it's one of these here. No, then that grep my sign NAS horn. Uh, model listener. Well, it's in there some, it's in this big giant list here. I can't, I don't have the time to find it now, but um, it's a listener, it's a service in OSGI, um, independently accessible through OSGI, but I'm just going to simply uh, start my blog generator again, show you the, uh, the output from these guys. So here's the running Liferay 7 um, log file here. You can see, and if I go back to my browser and start my wonderful social driver on Liferay 7, start blog, and you can see it's starting to go nuts here. So I'll just scroll up so you can 
see it here. Where is it? Somewhere in here. Here. So you can see the, uh, there's four duplicates because I have four listeners. But it's essentially um, creating a very simple listener in JavaScript. Uh, and let's see if our map is working again. Yeah, it's still getting, it's going crazy in the Caribbean. Well done. <laughs> um, you can see that um, that our super simple listeners are able to be injected into LifeRay. And then you can do all sorts of stuff. You can inject listeners for other things, not just blogs, but users. If you want to do auditing for users, if you wanted to do auditing for sites or anything in LifeRay. OK, so the second hack is creating a portlet, not just a listener, but an actual complete portlet in one line of two lines, three lines, four lines of code, five lines. So this is injecting a portlet into, um, into the runtime using the exact same mechanism. So if I go here and I do hack JS2, OK. And I go over here, and I reload my, or I just go over here to library 7, and I'm going to sign in. Idea is that the portlet should be should look like you know a real portlet now. So if I hit reload, get my add, let's go on here to sample, and you can see my Nashorn portlet is here. Hello from GoGo and Nashorn. So that is the simplest way I could find to create and inject a portlet um, into LifeRay. You can also remove it because as, again it's it's a regist it's a service in. Um, here, so if I see service grep Java X dot portlet dot portlet service says, so you can see it's it's sitting here just alongside all the other portlets in the system, including my WebSocket port uh, portlet and the recent bloggers portlet. All portlets in LifeRay are represented as services based on the uh, Java X dot portlet dot portlet. Uh, service name or service class name. So, okay. Uh, so the last one is the third one, which may be a little bit more useful. So um, this JavaScript command will actually look at LifeRay and compute performance statistics like the average rendering time for portlets or which page takes the longest or how many users you have on your system or how many were added in the recent past. Um, so it's a little bit longer, but not much. Uh, it's essentially invoking several uh, JMX mbeans, um, calling the mbean server and saying, give me your statistics. So it gets a list of companies here, so for each on liferay.com, liferay portal, portal util, get company IDs. That one's pretty simple. A list of all the portlets, and then it starts going into the, uh, the, the, the JMX mbeans. These mbeans are recording what's happening on your portal. So when a, when a portlet renders itself and it takes like 500 milliseconds, it re records that fact, and then it can compute statistics so it will do uh, it'll look for all of the um, all of the attributes for each of the portlets and then it'll rank them based on their uh, how fast they are or how slow they are so it basically gets a list of all the portlets and how long they the average rendering time of the portlet and then ranks them or sorts it based on uh, based on a function here which is basically just comparing the two re average rendering times and then showing you the results so this is a useful way to get statistics so hack js3 which is my, which will invoke that JavaScript command. And so it, it gives you, let me just do that again. Scroll to the top. So you can see there's tons of output here. Here's my, there's only one company. Here's all the portlets and all of their uh, the attributes. Not terribly exciting, but fun to print out. And then here is the statistics. So, um, a list of company IDs, portlet IDs, web IDs, and then the slowest rendering portlets. So you can see clearly the message boards portlet. I only rendered it one time, and it took almost 10 seconds to render. Um, if I reloaded it a couple times, it'd probably get back down. But clearly, when you see a big number like that, that is usually a red flag to say, hey, something's happening. Now, a lot of this, if you've heard of life rate connected services, that is its purpose, is the graphical, like nice, easy to use, subscription-based service. Um, but And it shows way more than just this. Um, and if you took the time, you could probably figure out all the APIs it uses to uh, get these this data. But this is really good for purpose-built, one-time, like, uh, what the heck is going on on my system kinds of stuff. And it's written in JavaScript. No GoGo -Go shell and no having to compile Java and deploy it to the server and hope that it doesn't fail. Um, this is one of the biggest 
benefits of this technique, these techniques, is that it's it's really fast to iterate. It's very very friendly for people who like JavaScript, like me. Um, I hope you don't um, hope you don't I hope that doesn't take me down a notch in your book because I like JavaScript. Okay, last one. This is kind of eye candy. So. Um, how many bundles do we have? We have 419 bundles. Uh, if you type services, there are over 6,000 services in here. Right? This is impossible to like digest. It's fun to watch the scrolling thing, but you really can't visualize what this looks like. So my last hack is gonna do exactly that. So there's two components to the final hack. And again, all the source code's available, so if I'm going too fast or, you're, or you can't see all the code that you want to see, it's all online and we can, uh, we can also walk through it later over uh, beer, hopefully. Um, <laughs> so there's two components. So the first component is a server-side web service, which gives you a list of things. And so what are those things? So uh, I'm gonna make this bigger for you guys. Command, that way, okay, let me make this even bigger too. Okay, so uh, here it is, the, the web service. So there's two APIs, there's package graph and service graph. Let me make this even bigger. So it essentially just does a for loop over all of the bundles, figures out their wiring, and this the wiring is a OSGI thing. You don't need to know what it means. It basically means tell me what you are depending on, what you're wired to, and then return that in a big giant JSON uh, object. And then the second component renders that into a, a cool graph. So um, you can actually see what this get pack, this package graph will look like. You can, I can actually invoke it uh, without a graphical representation through LifeRay's built-in web console for JavaScript services. Uh, dependency graph rests, package graph, and then invoke. And here's what I'm gonna get back. If I were a browser, this is what I would see. It's like this massive list of all the components, but it's organized, it's, it's organized in a hierarchy. So it lists each component and what it depends on and some notes about it. So yeah, you can, hopefully reading all this, yeah, it's long, okay. So let's look at what it looks like visually. So same server, 8081, dependency graph, and oh, I actually need to log out because I didn't um, properly mark that web service. Okay, so here we go. So let's go into presentation mode. Oops, or print, same thing. So this is LifeRay 7. These are all the components in LifeRay 7, right? This is like cool. I can do this, watch this. Look at that, how cool is that? You can drag things around, all right? It's very fun to do this. You could probably waste a good hour or two of your day <laughs> looking for something fun to do. Um, and it's, it uses d3.js, which is a JavaScript graph engine. Uh, it's this called a force layout. So it's like gravity is trying to pull things together, but they're also repelling each other. So that's why when I move things around, it kind of, it goes crazy for a minute, but then it kind of starts to settle down a bit um, because things start finding that equilibrium point where you know the, the forces are, are equal. Clearly this guy in the middle is super important. This is the bundle zero. This is like the God portlet, or sorry, the God bundle. Um, everything depends on it. It's, it's the OSGI bundle, which contains all of the core life ray services, plus all the OSGI stuff. So pretty much everything j uh, depends on it. Okay, so this is fun, but it's kind of like not super useful um, because of, you know, it's just crazy. So, uh, so I added a dependency uh, filter. So in this example, let's say you want to know about the wiki system. Okay, a little bit simpler. Um, you can see all the components that have the word wiki in them and all the things that they depend on. So you can kind of get a, a, a view on the world of wiki. Still, it's a lot of stuff. Um, and since you didn't write wiki, you might not necessarily care about this. It's kind of LifeRay's job to care about this. But let's suppose you have a component that you did write, like my social driver. Social driver. So here's my social driver uh, component, which I wrote, which I showed in the demo when I started that blog generator. That was this thing. So it's much simpler. Um, and the usefulness of this 
type of visualization is when you're building apps. When you generate, or when you write a new plugin for LifeRay 7, LifeRay, when you build that, LifeRay 7 looks into your code. It's going to look in your Java code, and I believe in your JavaScript eventually, and it's going to figure out what you're depending on without you having to explicitly declare it. Um, and so then it can wire your, 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 your bundle up to LifeRay properly when you deploy it into LifeRay. So this represents a visualization of what your plugin is actually depending on at runtime. Um, so you can kind of see that uh, right now, the only interesting thing I depend on is the wiki service because, um, and this is the social driver, this is the actual component that I wrote up, up here on the right. Um, all of the other things that it depends on, like the blog system and the message boards, are still in the uh, main OSGI LifeRay core bundle. The, the, the services are split out, but they're put into this bundle zero. The, the actual um, API itself is put into bundle zero. So that's why you see a dependency on it here. Um, and you can see zero here in the brackets is the, the bundle, na bundle number. Um, but the wiki service is split out into a separate bundle. Um, and so that's why you see this dependency here. So it's a, it gives you a very quick way to visualize um, some of the things. If you're using a, a personal project that you're working on, um, you can quickly filter things and get a, get a view of what your application is depending on at runtime uh, without having to uh, declare that at when you're actually uh, developing. So it's a fun way. And again, this is meant to give you an example of the power, the, the, the modularity of LifeRay, but also some ideas about how you can visualize things. Um, as we move into a more modular world, in LifeRay in particular, with 400 modules and 6,000 services, it's going to become even more important for us as humans to be able to make sense of that. And this is a, a, what I believe is the beginning of a much simpler and more expressive way of looking at LifeRay under a microscope. Um, you remember in LifeRay 6.2, when you looked at LifeRay, all you saw was like a giant Death Star, right? It, there's like, there's no way you could make sense of that. Um, in, in LifeRay 7, it's all been split out. Um, you can do all kinds of interesting things. Like when I hover, hover over one of these guys, it shows me the, the OSGI manifest contents. Um, you can imagine maybe, and then when I double click on these, by the way, I forgot to show you that. So um, when, I, when I double click on it, it's going to do a very quick, uh, let me bring back the, the ginormous thing here. So when, I double, when you double click on a component, it will, um, you'll see what happens when this thing calms down. Um, it kind of shows you, it, it, it grays out the stuff that's not important. So mobile, uh, portal expression, so we're just going to have to wait. <laughs> this is the problem with this kind of visualization. <laughs> so double click, and then it kind of shows you just what it depends on. And so you can do that. So if I actually find social driver, it's in here somewhere. <laughs> See, that's why I have the filter on there, so you can filter it out. But if I could find it, oh, I know, Sovial, social. Driver. Okay, so there's two of them now. There it is. So I double click, it gives me the same view that I had earlier um, with the wiki service and so forth. So you don't have to filter it out. So um, you can change the Java code to not give you back everything. You can just do it for com dot your company name, that, that kind of thing. Uh, but again, the code is out there. It's available for you to play with. Um, and I think that is all I had. Um, let me make sure. Yes. So again, this, the code's there. Uh, it is here. And I, it kind of describes all of the, um, all the things I just showed you. So a set of random hacks. Uh, all the hacks listed. Some code here. And all the hacks that I created in JavaScript.